Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Force here, and we are back with some more StarCraft II commentary. Today will be a series between EG's Huck and Marine King Prime. Gonna be another Terran versus Protoss today. We took a look at one of those yesterday, and I've got a bunch of other matchups coming up for you. Lots of really good players of replays have become available as of late. Now, I feel like some of these could be a bit dated, but that's okay, because maybe, just maybe, you have yet to see these games or you'd like to rewatch them with me commentating. Either way, I'm excited to get things underway here. We are here on the map Antigua Shipyard, spawning over here in the lower left-hand position. We've got our blue Terran player, Marine King Prime. And then over here in the upper right-hand spawn location, the red Protoss player is EG's Huck. So yes, a Terran versus Protoss, MKP Marine King Prime versus Huck. Oh boy, this is going to be a good series, I can tell already. <laughs> Force, nothing has happened. Yes, I know, but these are amazing players. And uh, TVP is fun for me to watch. Regardless, forget the fact that we've got some just grade A players here in this particular series. Oh, it's going to be a good time. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Already, Marine King Prime mixing things up a bit. I think he's going Command Center first. You can notice no racks yet. He's got no proxy SCVs. He's not proxying a racks anywhere or anything fancy like that. Everything's back at home mining. And here he goes, Marine King Prime going command center first. All you see, what did I tell you? I can already tell this is going to be a great, great series. Going command center first is, of course, incredibly risky. Very, very risky. He's severely delaying his early game army and this could really hurt him or could pay off tremendously that's the uh, those are the only two options there buddy <laughs> probe scout moving out huck will be checking all of this and he knows as soon as he gets that probe in there exactly what he has to do uh, it's either going to be hit with some early aggression try to punish marine king prime for being so greedy or just drop an expansion himself and hope to catch up at some point later on in terms of economy but here we go huck moving up with the scout he does spot that command center first and there's a second racks as well now to help compensate for the fact that he is going to be pretty low relatively in terms of army size early on he's coming out with that second racks obviously delaying the gas so that he can pump out those double marines one out of each racks and obviously with this too he will need a bunker absolutely 100 percent is going to need a bunker and look at this just juking around with the scv he's trying to continue and finish building this off while avoiding as much damage from that probe as possible here comes the orbital command two at the same time oh boy and then these two racks will be churning out those marines. And get, again, if he can just get up the bunker, he'll be all right. But here comes the first zealot. SCV passes that in the center of the map. And Marine King Prime does appear to just be relying on micro as he will not have the resources for that early game bunker. Now my concern, though, is when that stalker joins the fun. And that's going to be happening shortly. So here we go. First zealot heading on up. Marines now tucked away in the corner, able to get a couple shots off. Zealot's just going to turn around and go straight for that orbital. He's got enough Marines now to go out and do a bit of micro tricks to actually take out that Zealot. Huck, realizing he'd be in trouble there, decides to pull back. Just wait a little while longer until that Stalker comes. Now, when that Stalker comes, this is where I'm concerned here for Marine King Prime. This is where I am very concerned for Marine King Prime, that he will not be able to deal with the Stalker micro. Going first for the Zealot. Look at this. Who am I to doubt Marine King Prime? Pushing back, getting the Zealot already, and forcing back the Stalker with some incredible micro. Able to prevent the Stalker from essentially kiting around his Marines. Remember, the Stalker has the extra speed plus that range. But Marine King Prime able to get up nice and close, and now, all of a sudden, yeah. MKP, he doesn't need a bunker. That should be a slogan if it isn't already. <laughs> Marine King Prime doesn't need early game bunkers, he just needs sick micro. And he has it. Yes, he does. All right, warp gate research almost done. He's got one gateway in play. We'll be getting a second and third after that. Also, we do have a Twilight Council coming on through over here. Marine King Prime back over here, saturating that natural expansion. Got double gas up now with both those refineries and a third refinery coming on through. Finally decides, yeah, I'll get a bunker now. <laughs> I don't want to rely on micro anymore. Let me just ignore the front and lay down a bunker. Now here we go, Pylon gets placed down for Huck, and Huck could very well be planning to be aggressive here as he's about to finish with both those gateways, turning those into warp gates immediately after. And here it goes, guys. Dark Shrine from Huck. Huck will be hitting with some DT. 
Now, we don't have an engineering bay building right now, and the concern, of course, is that without that, he won't have any turrets to help detect those DT. But he doesn't know about those DT yet, nor has he scanned. In fact, he hasn't even scouted at all. He's got no scouting done on Huck so far, and I think Huck is pretty much taking advantage of that right now. That Dark Shrine very close to finished here, tucked away in the corner too, so that even if there is a scan, which is likely to be in this vicinity, also prob probably even likely to check that expansion with the scan, that he will not spot that Dark Shrine hidden in the corner, and oh boy, this could be concerning for me. Now of course, Marine King Prime does have the option to scan, but look at that, the energy nice and low as he is making sure he's mewling up very hard, and those DT are just about to come out, that Dark Shrine again, very close to finish, Marines, so many Marines and a Marauder pushing out, here come the first two DT. Now we expect him, expect him to split the forces, like one DT go over here, another one go over here, and what this will of course do, is if he does scan, well, he can't scan both places at once. And look at how low the energy is. The energy is so low. Yeah, he's going to take some damage. There's nothing he can do about it. Dark Templar already down here. Going to start killing things off. He's trying to build some turrets right now. Nothing doing, though. Going to be a little while longer until he can scan. Just not enough energy yet. DT over here doing some damage as well. Oh, no. There's a scan down over there. Still 2 DT in play. This one gets taken out. Down to just the one at the same time. Push coming from the front. Able to do some damage to that bunker. But unable to kill it. Stark Templar still dancing around. Doing what he can. Takes out the bunker. Now continues to push forward. But there's so many Marines and Marauder. And the DT continues to try to work out that front. Trying to break down that depot. Unable to do so though. He's actually just barely out of the range here of this missile turret. If he goes anywhere but where he is. Then uh, he's going to get detected. Now the concern here is that he's going to have to keep repairing this. Uh, <laughs> Huck's basically going to force a scan right now. Or he's going to force the creation of another turret a little bit closer. That DT needs to be careful though. Ah uh, yeah, see that was a perfect spot for him. Now he's going to get taken out. Gets a few kills though. Up to five kills. Finally gets taken out, but man, oh man, some nice early game aggression there from Huck back at home. He's coming out with a third. He's also got charge upgrade, 1-1 one, one upgrades coming on through. Four more gateways. Let's take a look here. Resources lost. Huck is behind. How many workers were killed? 12 workers killed. So I'd say that's a fair trade. He is about uh, 300 resources behind Marine King Prime right now, but he also killed 12 workers. But the concern right now is this. Look at this push. Marine King Prime... Moving out, Stim Marine Marauder is what he's going to have here. Combat Shield as well. Level 1 weapons done, level 1 armor now starting. He's continuing the production of bio right now. He also has those four medevacs in play. Two over here, where are the other two? There we go, other two going to be joining the fun in just one moment. Now dropping up into the main, he's going to try to do some damage up here and threaten to push at the front as well. He also is, has the ability to hit that third. So here we go, stimmed up bio, moving on, forcing all those workers off the line. DT coming down, trying to take out that bio. Skin takes care of that, however. These guys get surrounded. They're going to force a lift off over there unless he plans to continue. Yes, he's still going to do some damage. However, he's got the DT. Push coming up over here as well. Vision of the high ground, allowing him to take out a pylon. He's doing a bunch of damage over here. Finally taking care of all that bio. Not going to be able to work on down over here. But man, this bio is doing so much damage right now. Marine King Prime's counterattack proving to be very, very effective. Finally gets pushed back. Did a lot of damage there. Let's take a quick look. Resources lost. Look at how far behind Huck is right now. That was so much damage. And it's still going on. He didn't manage to clean up the rest of the bio. I thought he had it. But that stemmed up bio just being so strong. Another DT going to try to force a scan here. Is it worth it? Guess so. Lays the scan down. Try and drop over here as well. That, that gets taken care of. He's got, still doing damage over here. He's got some more bio reinforce. He's going to pick that up and continue to be aggressive with that. Factory Scout just chilling out over here. Medivac's going to drop back in the main again. And these guys heading back to the center of the map right now. No counterattacks at all here coming from Huck. He just really can't do that. Another drop over here in the main. A few warp-ins, a couple of DT. Plus all those probes at the surround and those stalkers. Forcing him to push back. Marine King Prime now scouting here. This third. He's probably hitting himself in the forehead right now. <laughs> Super face palming. Like, man, I could have taken that out with ease. With ease, he says. 
More DT gonna attempt to force a scan. Let's see if he takes the bait here. I think he might just head back home for now with that. It's so costly to be consistently scanning like that against those DT, and that's exactly why it's kind of worth it for Huck to keep throwing those into the mix here. Just to force that very thing. Bio pushing down over here. Trying to take out the pylon, gets a stalker. But one DT plus a couple Zelts will force the lift off. Looks like he can at least take care of this one on the high ground, though. And that he will do. Takes care of the pylon on the high ground. Now DT won't be able to push up into that natural. Just because of that one turret plus all that bio sitting there. Finally working down. And we'll take out this pylon as well. So he's at long last eliminated that proxy pylon threat. Although there is a probe right over here, so we could just see another one get placed right here for some more warp ins on the low ground. See if Huck decides to do that. Marine King Prime, he says, I am going to be relentless here. 1 1 upgrades done, working out those 2 2 upgrades. Marine King Prime preparing to push again. Now, Huck, he just has charged Zealots and Dark Templar. He's got a few Stalkers and Sentries there as well, but no Colossus, no High Templar. He's got two more gateways coming out, 2-2 two, two upgrades also coming out for him. In fact, he will be finished those before Marine King Prime finishes his 2-2 two, two upgrades. Marine King Prime finally moving into his third here. Got some more racks, a Ghost Academy coming out. Of course, those EMPs will help a lot against all those DT. Rather than forcing scans, rather just lay an EMP down to uncloak those DT. And here we go, stemmed up by a watch it drop, this Nexus. This will be... Rawful fast, and yes it is, the Nexus gets dropped almost immediately. Oh, how frustrating is that? So now Hawk is without Nexus, forced to come down with another one. And again, he has just charged Zealot and Sentry with a few Stalkers. And he's got some DT moving out here as well. Let's see what he's able to do with that. Absolutely nothing. That gets scanned and, take, scanned and taken out. Just charged Zealot. I don't think he's going to stand a chance here. Oh man, it's so tough. Bio stimmed up can just kite that all day without the threat of storms or that Colossus fire. It's a tough situation. Plus we have all this bio over here. Some ghosts finally coming in for the fun as well. For those EMPs, for the snipes. It's going to be pretty dangerous here. Huck finally prepared to make that transition. We'll be coming out with two robotics. I expect those to be producing Colossus. Once these are out, we should be seeing a bay go down. Armor level 3 plus shield level 1 actually will be coming out right now for Huck. Here's some proxy pylons again with this. He can drop right on the low. He can uh, warp in right on the low ground. That's what I mean to say. Let's keep an eye out. No more drops going on at all there for Marine King Prime. Huck doesn't have any aggression coming out either. All right, so 3-3 upgrades right now coming out for Marine King Prime. Again, we saw the armor level 3 plus the shield level 1 coming out over here for Huck. He is also working up that blink research. And there's that robotic space, so we'll be Colossus here finally. 18 minutes in the game. He'll have Colossus out in just a few more moments. Minutes. <laughs> just a few more minutes. Continue up the bio here. Marine King Prime is just going Marine Marauder, Medivac, and Ghost. Just what you expect. No reason to make Vikings yet because he has not spotted any Colossus yet. And this push, which is coming right now here from Marine King Prime, will get here before those Colossus. That is for certain. The bay isn't even finished here. Now we will have some Archons coming on through here. But the stemmed up bio gets ready to engage, pushing forward. Getting ready to land some EMPs as well. There they are, EMPs get landed. Nice force field wall though, trapping all the bio, allowing those zealots to catch up and do a lot more damage than they would otherwise. There's also a DT in there as well, and we haven't seen a scan yet, so that DT will be doing a lot of damage. But still, the bio is so strong, muscles his way through everything. Just a few more stalkers and a couple zealots left. Forced to lift off, goes in the main. Come the Blink Stalkers, sniping off the Medivacs. Unfortunately, neither of those two Medivacs he took out had any units in them. So these Marauders will continue to be able to do some damage here. Oh boy. Forced to finally lift off, but after he drops the Nexus. This is very rough here for Huck. So far he has lost two Nexi. Nexuses. Nexus? <laughs> He's lost two of them! The one at the third, and now here, this one in the main, and that's of course a problem because he still does have resources in the main, but it, it's it's almost not worth it to rebuild the Nexus anymore, so he's, we'll have to rely on remote mining for the rest of this. That is terrible for him. Marine King Prime getting ready to move into another 
expansion over here. As this orbital is getting close to finish. I kind of expect him just to take the center of the map, actually, to be honest with you. Dark Templar with six kills. Kills off the SCV, I think, was sitting here for a Marine King Prime. It was either that or a Marine. He killed something in the center of the map and now has map control. Huck, again, because there are so few resources left, he's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to rebuild that. And he's so focused, so low on income right now. He's so focused on just making sure he has an army. Ranking Prime, although they are about even right now, he'll be taking a huge lead in just a moment as he is about to saturate this expansion here in the center of the map. Huck still preparing for counter-aggression here. With these pylons, he's able to push out with like small groups of DT and stuff like that. Nothing at the moment. Huck trying to push to the center of the map, walks into all the bio, decides, uh, heck no, don't want to deal with that right now. One advantage I see to Huck right now is that he does have these Colossus and the Marine King Prime has no Vikings to counteract that, but, oh, Colossus need to be careful to not get caught out of position. Huge EMPs on almost all the Colossus, taking out all the shields. Shark Zealots plus some DT pushing forward, down and out three Colossus, one of them gets sniped instantly. Zealots forced back, nice concave here from Marine King Prime, but since he doesn't have any Vikings, it's a huge problem in dealing with those Colossus. Still no Vikings coming out either, none of them in production, finally producing some. Man, he was not ready for those Colossus, was he? That was just not what he was expecting to deal with. And that Colossus switch really helped Huck here force the lift off and do tremendous amounts of damage in the center of the map. Got some more warp in charge zealots here. Two Vikings getting close to finished, but nothing out yet. So we're going to see Huck here continue to poke and prod. We got that orbital burning right now, so that should be dying off in just a moment. He could finish it off at any point, but he does want to try to push forward here. Do what he can for damage. Scan goes down. Vikings now going straight for that Colossus. Another EMP gets landed. Charge Ellis. It looks like Huck has decided to commit here. At least to force everything back. Archon trying to take care of those Vikings. Huck now forced to retreat. Still have this burning orbital. Let's see if he tries to get that on the way out. He does not have a lot of anti-air. More Charge Ellis coming on through over here. Huck, however, look at this. He's still on the one base. He needs to get up an expansion. He's not about to win the game right now. If he doesn't get up an expansion, he's in a lot of trouble. He probably feels like he's so far behind, though. He can't afford it. Oh, no. He's about to lose all of his army. And is this going to die off or what? I don't know. He might be able to save it. It's going to be very close. Let's see if the Zealots here are able to stop that. Ah, uh, yeah. He's going to save it. Just need to drop a mule, get a repair. He is all set. So Marine King Prime... Defends the aggression there from Huck, saves the expansion in the center of the map, and now Huck, he's got pretty much nothing. Three Zealots, three Dark Templar, and three Sentries. Yeah, that's a problem. That is a major, major problem here for Huck. Marine King Prime continues to repair that expansion. He's got a tremendous advantage right now. Defending that push there could very well be the end of the game. I mean, I'm, I, I'm very hard-pressed right now to see what he's going to do here. Huck is going to have a very difficult time to come back in here. Trying to do some damage. Actually, he manages to escape the scan. Yes, he does. Just barely manages to escape the scan. So we will be able to move back in and force another scan or force 150 minerals to be spent on a tower. Yeah, there we go. He moves back in. Gets ready to force another scan. Marine King Prime trying to take out all those proxy pylons. Another DT. And Huck just keeping it up here with these TT. How many workers has he killed this game? He's killed 49 workers this game. That's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. DT tries to move back in. There we go. Scan dissipates. Another scan goes down. Marine King Prime wants to make sure he can finish that tower. Then, then he will be all set from that point forward. Still have this pylon. That's not in a super threatening position, though. Anything warped in here has to kind of traverse all the way around. We got a few units moving over here for a Huck, but not quite enough. Taking a look at the army size, 107 to 46. So Hawk, I mean, he can't even afford an expansion right now, right now, really. He's so focused on just trying to eke out enough units to be able to defend himself. And he really committed to that push here. Unfortunately for him, though, Marine King Prime was able to defend. And this counterattack, I think, is going to be the, the nail in the coffin. The proverbial nail in the coffin. 
Puck is attempting to go for a base trade. Now the concern here though is that sure he could do a bit bit of damage here. But as soon as Marine King Prime finishes up and pulls back, he's gonna be able to mop up this. I mean he's got such a tremendous advantage right now in terms of army size. 115 to 56. He's pretty much double the army size there of Huck. So yes, Huck can do some damage, it can kill off some things, but we could just see a lift off for one. And the other thing is that as soon as Marine King Prime does decide to pull back after he's killed everything, Huck's just going to lose all of his forces, so. But he's going to try it anyways. He's giving it that old college try. Scan to take out any DT. So many medevacs in play, that is ridiculous. Marine King Prime is just gonna be able to pretty much stay up stimmed indefinitely here with all that healing power of the medevacs. Hug doing what he can for damage. Again, it just it's one of those things like like this. Marine King Prime just lifts off and says, yeah, see you later. Whatever, dude. <laughs> now Marine King Prime continuing to tear through the rest of these buildings. Look at how quick he's doing so. Huck preparing to move on into that natural expansion. Again, I don't I cannot foresee him winning this game. It just doesn't seem probable to me. Marine King Prime decided to land that orbital. Now, obviously he could lift it off and float it in the corner, but that is kind of bad manners at the same time. I mean, it is a game and you're trying to win. That's the end result, that's the end goal. But still, trying to play, stay classy here, lands down that orbital and continues to fight like a man. All right, so this is it. It's all or nothing right here for Huck as he's even committing his workers to this engagement. I can't fathom how he's going to win this. EMP doing some damage here, trying to push forward, get a concave, Archon's moving forward, Probe's moving up as well, doing as much damage as he can, the Vikings even land for the fun, and there it is, Hawk calls the GG, game number one going to Marine King Prime. Alright my friends, that was game number one here between Marine King Prime and Huck. We will be moving on to game two in the series in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. Pretty interesting game number one. Uh, fairly good back and forth, however Marine King Prime was clearly superior for a majority of the game. And although Huck was able to do a lot of damage in this transition to Colossus, as soon as Marine King Prime came out with those Vikings, he was able to counteract that and get himself back in the lead. All right, that was game number one. Game number two coming in just a moment. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and keep owning.